Um. Box, sphere, <laughs> cylinder. <laughs> okay, in this section right here, we're going to talk about viewports. Terry, what are viewports? Viewports are actually where you work. Where I work. Yes, so whenever These? you... Yes, those four These would be windows. Yes, okay, correct. Okay, okay. So whenever you create an object, they will, of course, appear in your viewport. So I guess I'll just come over here and click sphere and create a sphere real quick, and then I can see it in my viewport, right? Exactly. All right, I guess a couple things we should talk about real quick would be what? Well, uh, navigation. That would be one of them, because how are you okay. going to move around if you don't know what you're doing? Okay, and we're also looking at a few different viewports, right? Right. We've Look got a front, a top, a left, and a perspective viewport. Right. Perspective, what a fancy word. What's the difference between these other viewports and this perspective viewport? Ooh, ooh. Oh, wait a minute. I think Kristen. somebody else knows. I think so, Kristen. Perspective has depth. A perspective has depth. Would Very you like to good. elaborate a little bit more for our viewers out there that may not understand what you meant by that? It's three-dimensional. Three-dimensional? Okay. You, you can more? tumble around and... No, well, you, you can, can tumble. Also tumble in orthographic. <laughs> yes, yeah, I can. Like. Okay. All right, it has depth. Another way of looking at it is our top, front, and left view, which are what type of view? Orthographic. Very good. They're orthographic viewports. They show things two-dimensionally. Okay, as Chris right. just said a second ago, the perspective is three-dimensionally. So basically, we're just looking at two axes. It's like we're just looking at a flat picture here. And the example that I always use time and time again is the, Kristen, tell me. Railroad tracks. Okay, in fact, you know what? You're so slick tonight, I'd let you go ahead. Tell me about it. Do it. Well, if you had railroad tracks in the perspective view and you'd keep looking on, they would slowly come to a point. Okay. <laughs> and if they're in the or orthographic view, they wouldn't. They'd be like the same. They'd be parallel to one another forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Forever. Would you agree with that, Terry? Uh, yes, I would agree with okay. that. <laughs> okay, so as she said, perspective view, if we were looking with perspective eyes, what we would be seeing would be the two lines coming to a point into the distance, right? Right. And in our orthographic views, what we would have is the two lines would never come together. Right. Okay. Now, when working in a perspective view... I'm going to come down here to this area. This is my navigation controls, okay? And the one that I, you've already seen me use quite a bit is the arc rotate. I'll go ahead and click it. I'll rotate around my screen, and basically, you know, I'm looking at one side. I'll come back. I'm looking at the other side. It's no big deal. Be careful when you're using the arc rotate tool. If you're to come up in your top, front, left, or any of your orthographic views, and we come in here and we start rotating, we create a bit of a problem, don't we? Yeah, that could actually mess you up pretty bad. Can it? Yes, it can. Special type of orthographic view? Yeah. This is a user view, okay? And this can get you in trouble really quick because <clears> it's <throat> not actually a perspective view. The lines, as these lines here seem to flow off naturally off into the distance, right. these lines don't because they're staying parallel to each other at all times. So be really careful if you get into a situation like this. You don't want to come in and take one of your orthographic views and start rotating them around. I'm going to go ahead and press T to go ahead and bring it back to a top viewport, okay? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. I noticed that you press T to go back to your top viewport. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there any other shortcuts that change for to different viewports? Like if I want to do F for front? Nope, right. only top. Okay, so now we've just <laughs> we've changed this viewport to All right, get out. the next version will have more advanced. Ooh, you, sound, you sound like me now. That's kind of impressive. Okay, so uh, you have taught her well. So we're looking at front. Uh, if we hit B, we're looking at the bottom. If we hit K, we're looking at the back. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? B bottom, T top, K back. L, we're looking at left. R, we're looking at the right. Uh, of course. And I'll hit T to go ahead and come back into a top view. <laughs> okay, so um, so before we start digging too deep into all these viewports, the first thing that I'd like to go ahead and point out is you need to know in 3ds Max which viewport is active while you're working because that's where things are going to occur. And sometimes you get in trouble by thinking that you're going to do something in the front viewport or some other viewport that's inactive. Mm -hmm. And when you click and start to drag, the drag option doesn't always work because the click simply set focus to that viewport as opposed to starting an operation. Does that exactly. Make sense? Yeah, okay. you have to highlight it before you start working right. it. Right. And right now you'll see in my top view, I've got this highlighted yellow border around it, indicating that this is my active viewport. If I click over here in my front view, two things just happen. 
This guy just became active. And what else happened? You deselected your object. I deselected my object. Woo. So when you click between viewports, you might want to think. <laughs> you feeling okay, Kristen? I got excited because I knew why it happened. Well, okay. So when you click over in another viewport, you need to really be careful because you could end up messing things up where you may want this object to remain selected. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is just simply come over here and middle click in this left viewport and middle click over here. You see how it's remaining? I active. believe you could also right click. Yes, you can. Okay. Pretty good? Yep. All right, good. Now, um... I'd like to go ahead and talk about next. I guess we need to go and talk about that navigation you're talking about. Yeah. Or well, uh, right before navigation. How about this? Just <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we'll wait on oh, that. <laughs> can I can I come in here and change the size of these things? Yes, actually, you can. No, <laughs> you're not doing it right now. <laughs> it looks like I am, Kristen. And glad you tried, though. I'm going to put the mouse here in the middle, and we'll just simply click, drag it down to the middle. Or if I want to go ahead and make sure that everything is reset properly, I can come in here and just right-click in these center lines right here and click on the reset layout, and it will go back center. I did not Ooh. know that. So I really did not know that. <laughs> you learned something? Yes, that's very cool. That actually would have been helpful a long time ago. <laughs> you know what? It's really helpful when you're using, like, I won't mention brand names, but particular video cards when things like slow down to a screaming halt, right? Exactly. And it's like you're trying to rotate, and it's like, eh, 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 yeah. Eh, and you're like, come on, man! All I got is a teapot on my thing. <laughs> but if you go full screen, it's even worse. Right. So, but if you're not full screen, it's you know it's an okay speed. Yes. So if we come over here and we do like that. We've just moved it full screen in a way. Exactly, and it, for some reason, is fast. And it stays fast. <laughs> for, for those of you out there that are watching the CD, uh, there may be a few that just know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. Right. So we'll go ahead and come back in here, and we'll right-click, reset layout, boom, back to normal. So now let's go ahead and talk about Terry's favorite thing, navigation control. Are you sure this time? <laughs> well, while we're at it, I guess we can go ahead and – yeah, I guess I'm sure this time. All righty. So let's go ahead and come down here to the lower right-hand corner. These are our navigation controls, okay? The icons will change a little bit down here in the lower left-hand corner right here, uh, depending on the type of viewport that you're in. Uh -huh. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the general ones. What I'm going to do first is make sure that I have an orthographic view active. <coughs> And this guy right here is Adam. Um, let me give you this one. Come on. It's a magnifying well, glass. It's a magnifying glass. I believe that's Zoom. Okay. <laughs> so we have our audience out there, and this is the first time that we've ever caught a student sleeping on the CD. No, magazine. actually, I wasn't. Do we kill him? Yeah. We're Do just we like ten him? feet away from the screen. Oh, yeah. Ten feet away. What? He was in the other room, man. He was playing Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted to learn this yeah. stuff. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. He was uh, a Doritos. So we'll click the zoom. zoom button, and we will zoom in, and we will zoom out. Not difficult. Okay. So that's pretty simple, right? Right. Now, my tool is still selective. How do I get rid of this zoom tool? You can right-click. Do I come down here and click it again? But that doesn't work. It doesn't work. So if I right-click? Right-click. Gets rid of it? No, it doesn't. Hold on. Don't let that fool you. Don't <laughs> let that fool you. Watch this. Let me move my mouse. Tink. Oh, <laughs> see that? that Throw me off because it always works for me, and you just that screwed me up. Dirty, I'm I leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that was just dirty. That was, that uh, was basically <laughs> the viewport doesn't update. Now let's go ahead and come back down here. So this was our zoom tool, zooming in and out. You get the idea of how it's how it's working here. Let me go over here to this next one. Anytime you see these little four red boxes behind it, it's zoom all. Kristen, that's a painful look you're giving. What do you think that does? My eyes are straining. What do you think that does? Zoom all. I don't know. This this could be, like, totally wrong, but okay. I think it might zoom all of the viewports. All right, Terry, what do you think? I have to be in agreement. Be now, if I did some sort of dirty <laughs> trick and it didn't work, I will punch you. <laughs> so I will punch you many times. So... <laughs> Okay, use your left mouse. <laughs> <laughs> that was Not the good. middle mouse. So, <laughs> left mouse, and yes, it does zoom all of the viewports as you see here. Next thing over, let me go ahead and switch this um, over here to Zoom Extends All. This one right here is extremely helpful. Yes, it is. There's two different ways that you can use it. Uh, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner, it may be kind of tough, but there is a triangle down here. This is our zoom extents. What zoom extents will do is frame up your scene. So in other words, if you come in here, let me go ahead and right-click to deselect that zoom all tool, and we get totally lost, right? 
Right. Which is, I mean, this is pretty common to. It a, happens a lot. To, a, <laughs> to beginners. <laughs> yes. Never, never to Terry. Especially, no, of course not. It never <laughs> happens to me. Especially if you don't have your object selected and you can't see the, you know. The uh, locator. So, the, now, so right yeah. now I kind of feel like, <laughs> Mommy, I've lost everything and I'm looking, exactly. I can't yeah. find it. So what you can do is you can come down here and click on Zoom Extents, mm -hmm. and it will take your active viewport, and it will make your entire scene fit. Now, right now our scene just consists of a simple... Sinkles. Not a, single. A single? Single, 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 single. Nueva dos, nueva dos. So let's go ahead and come here and create a teapot, maybe, because they're exciting, and a box, tink. Tink, tink, tink. All right, so now we've got those. Let's get lost again, and we're lost. We'll go ahead and come down here again, zoom extents. It fit the entire scene. Let's come over here, middle click our top viewport, entire scene. Okay, so you get the idea left. I drew it upside down yeah. in the front viewport. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's kind of odd. <laughs> so there we go here. That's what happens when you don't make things in the top viewport. <laughs> and perspective. And you get the idea. Now, right. Something that's really handy as scenes begin to get larger and larger is the capability to zoom extents into a, an object that you need to work on. Exactly. Okay. So if let's say, because if you have an entire what if city, I had this. <laughs> ah, it's a little too small, right there. There, there we go. And and now I'm lost. And so I do scene. Well, that doesn't do me much good if I want to actually work on this guy because now i got to zoom in and all that, right? Right. But I can go ahead and select that, and I can come down here, and there's a little flyout, click, hold, and you'll see that right now the, the zoom extents I'm using is this gray color. Right? right, right. There is one in here that's this white color. The white one is zoom extents selected. See how up here the selected object is what color? White. Okay, that's the relationship. So I'll go ahead and click on that. I like that. Very cool. So I'll just click in here. You'll see that now the last one that I used, which is Zoom Extends Selected, is still selected. So I'll just click it, mm -hmm. and there you go. You could also press the E button to do that. The E button, that's right. Now, earlier, if they were joining us in on the user interface, they saw that we had the wrong shortcut keys loaded, the ones exactly. from Max 3, which got exactly. us in trouble. But uh, I could go ahead and zoom back, as Mr. Wilson's talking about, select an object, and just hit T, or E. E, me, that's e. A P, yeah, E, e. <laughs> and... There you go. Exactly. Okay. So basically it's That just becomes really handy. Yes, absolutely. It's just framing up our selected object. So <clears throat> pretty pleased with that. Yep. Of course, over here we've got the little four red boxes behind it. It's called Zoom Extents All. So we'll look back over at Kristen. What do you think it's going to do, Kristen? Nothing. Zoom all. <laughs> <laughs> How about fit the entire scene in each viewport, all of them? I am in agreement. <laughs> All right, well, you said that. So <laughs> click, and there you go. But again, what's the problem that we have? Maybe we're wanting to work on a single object. Object? It's real spread out. You can't tell a whole lot of detail in your individual job. So I've got somebody <laughs> selected right now that I want to work on. I do have this zoom all capability, right, Kristen? Right. And it's a fly out, right? Right. And I, that means I can hold it and select the white one? Sure. And what's it going to do? You know. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We'll just leave her alone for now. Yeah. Okay, so we have taken that object and we have zoomed up in all of our viewports. So really handy. Exactly. Next thing we have is the zoom region. Okay. What this will allow me to do is basically marquee select where I would like to zoom my viewport. Uh -huh. So I'll just go ahead and say I'm going to be really tight on the sphere. So I'll marquee select it, let go, and it will zoom that up. Right. Okay. Now, that will change if I come over to a perspective or camera view. As you see here, it is now a field of view. So if I click on this, I am changing the field of view, the camera lens basically. But it is also a drop down, so I'll click hold or a fly out. And I can also come up here and there is a zoom region. And I can use the zoom region as well inside this perspective view. Mm -hmm. Pretty good? Yep. All right, next to that we have our little pan tool. So we'll click the hand, and this will simply just pan things around. Okay? Yep. What? Oh, and Madison, I was just uh, admiring your golden sphere there. No. What were you pointing your watch for? <laughs> what? No reason. I was trying to figure it out, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I drained Show it. Show me I'm what. <laughs> no, there's really no telling. <laughs> <laughs> Your beard. <laughs> There's a big spike sticking out of your beard. <laughs> yeah, but it's <laughs> You look like one of those old evil villains, like, hey, hey, hey. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. At least I'll 
I'm not eating my hair lot, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> don't Logan, cry, Logan. Don't, don't believe him. Logan would never eat his hair. Would you, Logan? That's sick. That's just <laughs> disgusting. No, I'm serious. I look back there and he has fingers uh-huh. in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'll twirl that. I just can't take you serious with that thing sticking out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his beard, he starts lying. <laughs> He's like the evil Adam. <laughs> yeah, that looks better. Sure. All right, what's up with the watch? You gotta go? <laughs> no, man. You sure? Dude, what, would I, what would I do? I don't know. <laughs> it's 1130. I, mean, I, I probably dreamed it. It was starting to look like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> you pay me with five of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess we better get back in here. Yeah, I don't even remember what we were talking about. So I do. So we're still on viewport navigation, and right now we're talking about being able to track around the view as you see here. Yes. Okay? Very handy as in being able to just kind of move around. Okay? Right, exactly. So now we have the arc rotate. I've said this before. Please only use this inside your perspective view. Yes. Don't come up here to a front view or something and start rotating. I mean, look what it's doing. Yeah. Well. That's now, easy. also that um, there is every once in a while it will get a glitch to where if you use if you turn your top viewport into a user viewport mm-hmm. and you press you know if you turn it back to your top viewport if mm-hmm. you get on a perspective and start try to rotate sometimes mm-hmm. it doesn't happen all the time but it happens. Exactly when you don't need it to, uh, it will start rotating your top viewport again. Um, that's so interesting. It has happened to me many, uh, many times. Excuse me. Uh. <laughs> I've never actually seen that happen. I will have to show you sometime. But it, I'm, it's happened more than just me, so I know it's out there. Okay, I'm not really here. <laughs> what? No. Um. So if you're not supposed to make it a user viewport, why is it there? Like, what good does it do? What's the Purpose. You got any thoughts on that? No. Just to screw because you up. Never it's kind of like having another perspective. Y- yeah, so I mean, yeah, I mean but if, you, if you have to have an orthographic type perspective view without depth, there you go. Yeah, if you have to. But other 3D packages just say no, and they don't give you that capability. Oh well, yeah, because. Yeah. Why would you use it? I wouldn't use it. If you need it, there you go. I use it all the time. It is a way of getting. (laughs) It is a way of getting you in trouble, especially if you're new to Max. Exactly. Okay, so um, that's worth pointing out. Are you making another (laughs) fight? Helps me concentrate. Okay. (laughs) So, uh, so I've still got the arc rotate tool selected. You'll notice I get this little icon up. Uh-huh. And I can move my mouse over these areas and constrain the way that I'm going to actually rotate this viewport. Okay? As you can see here. In the middle, I get all of the views. Yep. Something that you may have noticed and nobody's really asked yet is that I, like, start moving something, then suddenly I just kind of undo it without hitting any keys or anything. I'm sorry. It's second nature to me. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I if, saw it, but I didn't ask. If you're in the middle... <laughs> If you're in the middle of any sort of operation inside of 3ds Max, and you've got your left mouse button down, and you're dragging and actually doing that operation, and you want to just cancel <coughs> it, just say, ah, forget it, we've decided not to. I can simply tap the right mouse button, as I just did there, and it will just cancel whatever you, whatever I'm doing. I mean, this works for pretty anything. much everything. Yeah, Indeed. I mean, if I come over here into my front wow. viewport, grab a sphere, and I start dragging out a sphere, and I mm-hmm. say, you know, never mind. I can just tap right, right mouse button, there you go. That's exactly. while you're still holding the left mouse You button. got it. That's while you're still holding. Now, of course, the moment you're done, well, if I right-click, it's, it's just going to cancel that tool. Right, it just deselects your object yeah. or your tool. Or your tool, yeah. yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Kristen? Yes. Okay. So, uh, moving on from that, uh, <laughs> last thing we have. Also, of course, we do have, real quick, I guess I'll go ahead and point this out. As you see, we've got... The arc rotate, we also have arc rotate for selected. It's white. Mm-hmm. So that will allow us to arc rotate around a selected object. And even better yet, we have arc rotate on a sub-object. And let me go ahead and show you what that means real quick. Even though this doesn't mean a lot to you at the moment, just because we haven't actually got into or it. Or absolutely nothing. If I zoom in here. Well, for those of you that are able to follow along, I got the Unlike subject me. selected. <laughs> I'll come over here, convert this to an editable mesh. And I'll go into all of its points that make up this object. If I wanted to, I could select a single point. And by bringing this arc rotate to the yellow one, okay, 
This will allow me to come in here and arc rotate around the selected object. It allows me to, let me go ahead and zoom back in on this. It allows me to keep my focus on that one, as you can see here, see how it's not moving from that location? Yeah. Neat. Opposed to if I was, let's say, in here on select it, now I'm actually going around the selected object. And you lost your point that yeah, you're trying to work exactly. on. Yeah, exactly. So if I was trying to keep that point and focus right there, that does me no good. And if I just do the whole thing, the whole scene, that's not doing me any good there either. Right. Okay? So uh, it's a good thing to know that they have this third one in here. So let's go ahead and just come out of this uh, object mode right there. And finally, the last thing I want to show you down here in the navigation controls is the ability to minimize, maximize your current active viewport. So right now, perspective is active. I can simply come down here, click it, and it is now maximized. If I come and click it again, it will then restore it back to what it was before. Yeah. Do note, this is a hotkey that you will want to use often instead of having to come down here every time you want to maximize it. Right. And that is the W, w. key. W. That's right. W key will make it large. W key, again, will toggle it back down to its original size. Make sense? Yep. Makes sense. All right. So um, a couple things real quick about navigation without using these down here. With a three-button mouse where the middle button is a rollerball or a wheel, you do have the ability to come in here and roll the wheel forwards and backwards, and you can see we're zooming in and out. Mm -hmm. Another thing to point out is you can press that wheel down to activate the button portion of it, and you can now pan around your view with it. So it's real handy. It keeps us from having to go down here into this area. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, um, also, if you hold down Alt. Oh, yes, that's a good one too, Terry. Thank you very much. So if we hold down Alt, we can go in come in here and tumble around as and well. And rotate. Now, also, if you hold down Control and Alt at uh -huh. the same time while you're zooming in and out, uh -huh. you will zoom in and out, well, uh, if you, um, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. That, 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 right there. You'll notice that it's much smoother. It's That's not so right. choppy. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm not rolling. I'm right. just pressing it down. And then I get the real fine control. Exactly. And that's that's really helpful if you need to zoom uh, in on a particular part. And you absolutely. Don't. Absolutely. So. Very good. All right. Um, so next thing I guess we can go ahead and talk about real quick while we're still on the subject of viewports is different shading modes or different modes that you can view your stuff in. Yep. Right now we're viewing things differently in our different viewports. All of our orthographics are currently showing us things in what type of a mode? Wireframe. Absolutely. And what, how are we seeing things right now over here in perspective view? Shaded. Shaded. Terry? That's right. Yes. <laughs> I'm we're, sorry. We're actually... We're actually <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we're actually viewing this right now smooth shaded smooth with highlights. Smooth and highlights. I'm yes. sorry. No, that's, that's, that's okay. Yeah. But let's go ahead and point this out. Each viewport, upper left-hand corner has got the title of that viewport. Right. We can come up here and right-click on these titles, and by doing that, we will get a little pop-up menu, mm -hmm. a little context menu. From inside it, the first section allows us to control the way we see our objects. In other words, right now I'm viewing the perspective view as smooth plus highlights. Right. And we can see that right here. Obviously. So I could go ahead and come up here, right-click, <coughs> and come down to wireframe, and we've converted it to a wireframe view. Exactly. I'll go ahead and right-click again, and there's other, and there's several things, just smooth, um, there's just a bunch of different things. Bounding box, if it's a really slow computer that and you And it's got. like a dense scene. Yeah, like, which could know. be very handy. Yeah, that's okay. very handy. So, uh, just display as... So we'll go ahead yeah. and come back in here and just change it back to smooth highlights. Uh, a few more things. I don't, I'm not going to get into every single option down here, but just a few of the important ones for now. Uh, edged faces is also very handy. By turning that on, you can see now that I am viewing my shaded object with my wireframe over it which this could be really good. Okay, so we can come back in here. I'm going to, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you some hot, ge hot keys to, to activate some of these things. Sorry about that. It's getting late. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and turn edge faces back off. Show grid. All right, we can toggle our grid on and off. Right now, since we've got things so blown out of whack, I'm going to go ahead and come up here to File, Reset Scene. No, yes, I really do want to reset. Create a box, and there's a little box. So we'll come over here to our perspective view. Alt, middle, mouse button to rotate around it. There you go. Back into perspective. Right click. I'll come down and turn show grid off. Grid is now gone. Sometimes it gets in the way, and it's right. a good idea to get rid of it. Bring it back. Hot key for it is G. G will get rid of it. G will bring it back. Very good. I always turn those things off. Okay. So um, show <coughs> safe frames. Show safe frames can be handy when you are 
working on content that's going to be outputted for like NTSC. Depends on the media that you're outputting <coughs> to, and uh, you know you need your title area. In other words, the region that you need to make sure all text stays within. And then you've got your safe action area. There's some other areas, and these things can be talked about later in a more advanced, uh, in a more advanced CD. But yeah. just know that safe frames are to help you make sure that the proper stuff that you're doing in your scene stay within the right area, so that nothing acts. I mean, there'd be nothing worse than to have a cool title for your animated piece, and, and you, in the first <laughs> three letters, yeah. that could really be bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll go ahead and come back in here and turn uh, show safe frames off. And the right click. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to get into real quick? Let's come down here to views. By coming into <coughs> this menu, we can basically come down here and select what we want to see. Right now, you see it's perspective. We can go to a user. We can say go to a front view. So we can change the views to all of our common views. If we add a camera into our scene, which let's go ahead and do real quick, camera, free camera, click. There it is. If I right click again, come back down to views, you'll see all my cameras are listed up here on the front. Which exactly. Be, which is very handy. Uh, we also can put like our track view, schematic view, a bunch of different things that we can put inside this view panel area, right. viewport area. Okay? So finally, we can come down here to the configure, and in the configure dialog, there's only one thing I really want to show you right now. You've got a layout tab that you can come into, and there's different layouts that you could set up your viewports for. Let's say I was working on something where I needed a two-split horizontal. I could click on this right here, click OK. Okay, so now I've got this and this. I may even want to right-click come down to views and that's off the screen so let's see well just trust me on this views I'm gonna come down even though you can't see it to track view do a new track view and now if I was doing some sort of animation like let's say I animate move and let's just animate our camera around okay then I can just go ahead and come over here move down to objects and Expand my camera, transforms, positions, switch over here into a graph mode. Just kind of like the little demo I showed you earlier. Right. And let's go ahead and frame this up. <coughs> so now we can see everything. And now I can work with my object up here. I can kind of pull this down a little bit. And I can work with my animation down here. I mean, it's handy. Yeah, so you right? can see what you're doing at the Absolutely. same time you're working Absolutely. So basically, right. I'm, I'm just trying to show you how you can come in here. And you can set up different views. I mean, there's all sorts of different things that we can do. Let's go ahead and right click. Let's change this maybe over to a perspective view. I'm going to right click again and come back down to configure. I know that's off the screen, but it brings up our dialog here. And there's there's all sorts of different setouts, setups in here that we can use for our different viewport arrangements. Right. Pretty nice, huh? Yeah. yeah. And of course, we do have the ability to still control how much is seen from these guys, as you see here. Yeah. And also, right click, reset, and it knows how to reset that layout. Pretty good? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and come back in here. Back down to configure again, and from layouts, we'll go ahead and come back here to the bottom right, and we'll switch back into our regular four view. Go ahead and come down to OK. All right, let's see. Is there anything else that we need to talk about that's pretty important? I guess we'll go ahead and cover the hotkeys real quick yeah. to go in and out of shaded and wireframe. So I'll come up here to perspective. I'll press W to go full screen. Alt, middle mouse button to rotate around. F3 key will toggle between a wireframe view and a shaded view. Okay, you can't really highlight. tell that well with the box. You can throw so something else up get there. Get a little sphere up here. Yeah. And now I better throw this in a top view for you, like totally have a cow on me. <laughs> and we'll switch it back to Never a perspective. Never create a perspective view. Okay, until you get good. Yeah. All right. And you know what you're doing. So there we go. Hit F3. Boom. Wireframe. F3 again will bring us back over into our shaded Shit. view. So now when we get into modeling. Smooth and highlights. Uh, yeah, smooth and highlights. We get into modeling a little bit later on. Uh, it'll be handy to be able to, in fact, I'm going to, even though I'm not going into modeling, I'm just going to show you how working with uh, different uh, configurations with your viewport can be really handy, different shaded and wireframe <coughs> modes. I'm going to come in here and select one of my faces on this object. I'm going to hit F4 to enable edged faces. Back here you'll see that I can now see the wireframe around this, uh, and this can become very handy. And now I have clicked on this face and I've selected the face. Okay, and you just see this red outline. I'll hit F2 so that I can see my shaded face that's selected. So as I click these different faces, that's far more convenient. Now I'm going to hit F2 again to toggle that back off than just seeing this red outline. 
Right. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, that's that becomes really handy when you're working with dense meshes. So, I mean, we could work in it like this, you know, where we're in wireframe, you can see the red a little bit better. Right, but even but then. It, it's just good to see this thing shaded right. like that. So I'll hit F3 again. We'll go back into a shaded view. And if I was to come in here now and let's see, we want to come down to where are, oh, it's closed up. Yes. Hang on. And let's see, edit geometry, extrude. And maybe extrude out bevel, so we'll pull that out a little bit. We'll scale it down. And let's go ahead and hit F4 now so you can see the impact that the edged faces have. All right, so now I've turned all my edged faces off, and not being able to see the wireframe uh, can end up being a little bit of a handicap. Exactly. So we'll hit F4 again. You can see it's just really convenient being able to see, you know, where you're coming out at like such. Okay? Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good deal. So uh, hit W to go ahead and go back to our four views. Anything else that you can think of right away, Terry, hmm. that our audience out there needs to know about working with viewports? I'm just the, UI colors. the UI colors? No, um, I don't want to get to that on this one. I'm going to actually leave customization and max can get real deep, but I'm going to leave that to its own little thing. Right. All right, well, so, but thanks. I could probably take up an entire CD on its own. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, anything else? I can't think of anything. Uh, maybe my mind's a blank, but I really can't think of anything. Seem like we've got everything. Any any viewport questions you guys have or pretty pretty good? I mean, enough to know. Enough to know how to get around. around and Okay. So uh, So with that, I guess that will conclude the viewport section. Thanks a lot, guys.